I think I've finally found the most satisfying thing you can ever do on fighter class. And coming from somebody who literally has their own skin in the game, I've tried lots of things in Dark and Darker. And no, it's not chopping up a wizard with falchion or landing the perfect blow on a five-knowledge brainless barbarian, or even defending a horde, which can be one of the most satisfying things in Dark and Darker, as you and your opponent both try to capture every little piece of AP possible on their demigod grind. This bard was putting up a pretty good fight, but luckily, luckily, the longbow came up clutch. And no, that wasn't even the most satisfying thing, but this was. See ya! <laughs> we, got we fucking got him, dude. Oh my god, he's gone. We did it. And yes, that's probably one of my favorite things I've ever done in Dark and Darker. And that is Shield Slam to Perfection. I used to call it the most disrespectful skill, but it's gotten even better. Oh my god! Iron Mace decided to give this thing a knockback, and as observed, it's most effective when a player jumps at you. It even popped up this rogue as he attempted to jump around me, and he nearly impaled himself on the spikes in the ceiling. You can also space yourself with it, and every shield has a different animation. As you just saw there, Heater Shield has a wide sweep, and Round Shield has this narrow push, which I'll slow down for you because it can be very easy to miss as the hitbox is quite narrow and quick. As you saw, we put that one right through his face and it still didn't land. Now, if you are attempting to use this for more than just a meme, it can be possible. And this is the first time I really took it out into the wild with its new knockback capabilities. Fortunately, sometimes barbarians have iron will so it doesn't work. But it does still apply the slow as before. And you do keep your blocking frames, which is kind of gradually made Shield Slam somewhat usable, but I wouldn't say it's gonna outpace Second Wind or Sprint. It's just a really fun thing to use. Yo, that's crazy now, huh? And even with just a slow hitting this guy in the face, it does allow you to space yourself properly and land swings at the right moments. Now, if you get into the melee stuff where the slow is hitting and the knockback is hitting, there are some situations where people just can't get close to you at all. I did end up taking this into HR, and truthfully, I was in some lower geared lobbies, which felt nice. It gave me a chance to really test it against a bunch of different players. In this situation, I think I get rather fortunate because Felling Axe Barbarian without Iron Will is just like perfect. It's perfect for this setup. It's so good at spacing them properly, and we'll walk through this one, but there's really no way they should be getting on top of you if you have shield slam. Like I said, heater shield has kind of a sweep, so it can also block for a few seconds after the after the animation hits, and it comes in quite much sometimes. Right there, we can just we can just smack him away from us. The two second slow is enough to keep him from being able to re-engage. And if we have decent enough decks, you should be able to land a swing in there. And maybe, maybe if you're lucky you catch his swing and counterattack on a whole bunch of other things happening. We're really forcing the shield slam in a lot of our fights just to, just because I love it, simply. Simply because I love it. So there are many times where I take a lot of risk using it, but I wanted to try this and it felt very satisfying. Thank goodness we had a bit of dexterity on this fighter because his Viking sword likely killed us, but we swung just before he did. So yes, in melee engagements, you can work people with Shield Slam because of the knockback. I've pushed rogues around like I showed you earlier, and bards are also a very good class to smack around with a buckler. What happens is, you're going to run into a lot of warlocks. Warlocks, wizards, even clerics are a little bit difficult, because if you get in smite range with Morningstar, you're risking a fair bit of melee damage. It'd be very good with that block and time it almost perfectly, or else you're sacrificing a lot. In this situation, we sacrificed everything, but fortunately for us, this was still a feel-good moment. Just a quick peek at this Warlock's gear shows me that I definitely come up ahead here, considering I went in there with literally nothing but a blue falchion. So, Warlocks are extremely difficult to deal with. They can simply bonk you, do magic damage, and then many other engagements you're dealing with very, very strong wizards, which can be quite frustrating. I don't think Shield Slam will really ever fit into some sort of 
meta where people are going to be running it consistently on fighter class simply because range damage is so strong. Range damage and magic damage right now is very, very strong. And the few classes you will get into those engagements with, like Barbarian, like if you're thinking of taking this on a team, that Barbarian is very likely to have Iron Will and restrict any knockback. So then you're just basically trying to stat check other fighters who are likely running Second Wind. And Second Wind is just so good when you're running Plate. It's very, very tricky. It's in an odd spot. It's not easy to space. And these are the kind of interactions you get into which are horrifying. Because you know as well as I do. This is like 90% of my HP is going to be gone with one of those, one of those little swings of this man's long, rough shaft. So, I do everything I can in this situation to try to get the advantage. Uh, use my range damage as much as possible, and we will be talking about what I prefer now on Fighter Class for my range damage option. And this kind of, it's still a work in progress, but I have been very much enjoying Dexterity with a Longbow, and we'll, we'll show an example of it later. But in this situation, just observe. Just observe how much, I don't know if you call this bad luck, or just unfortunate. This is entirely unfortunate. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. He had the Dark Reflection, and bonked me once I was at 50% HP. He had enough time to blow Corruption too, which is crazy. But he was literally 1 HP. Unfortunate. I thought about it, maybe I could have shield slammed him to keep him away from me so his staff couldn't hit me, then en then engage him. But really, there are so many situations where you're going to find yourself lacking with shield slam. And it's unfortunate, but since playtest 3, when I started playing, sprint and second wind have pretty much dominated any fighter build you want to run. And I think that's still the case. Now, one thing I will say that I have changed recently is using longbow. With a bit of dexterity, and you'll see it here. 15, I think I'm running 15 action speed on this. Uh, so I have a bit of dex built and some decent action speed. And it makes the longbow feel amazing. I have never been a fan of the longbow as a solo player because you feel very slow and a bit cumbersome. But when you start building dexterity and you can, you know, spit out a lot more damage quickly because of that longbow and the stats it has on it. I'm not going to lie to you, I was having a ton of fun with it. A ton of fun with it. It felt very, very nice. So, Shield Slam, just to summarize, amazing fun, one of the most satisfying things I've ever used, and I'll probably still continue to use it, but going forward on Fighter Class, I really don't know how they, I don't know how they approach it and make it something that's ever going to compete with Sprint or Second Wind. They could adjust the hitboxes a little bit, so it's not so damn difficult to hit with a round shield. Even still, there will be so many situations where you feel like you're just kind of hung out to dry when you're running Shield Slam. It, it can be rough. I will say this though, I had some of the most fun I've ever had playing Dark and Darker using Shield Slam, and in my opinion, Dark and Darker is meant to be fun. So I will continue to use it most, most days just because it's so hilarious. I have made that pit room one of my favorite rooms in Ice Caves because you have the potential to knock players off, and it's just so, so funny to see the reactions of some individuals when you're when you're attempting shield slams and they're near the edge and they know it and they're kind of... That fear... That fear hits them at the last moment almost like this guy. But he gets away. And most times they do get away because it is very difficult to pull off. Once again, thank you all for watching and enjoying this content. I hope some of you do try shield slam before the season ends. Just because I think it's an experience we should all be able to enjoy. 